Back in the garage today. In the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today working on my 2008 KTM 990 Adventure. Today I'm going to remove the factory airbox and replace it with an upgraded airbox. I know the title says Rottweiler, but I'll get into that in a few minutes. So um, if you don't know how to remove the fuel tanks, which you're going to have to do in order to do this project, I'm going to link that video up there. It'll show you how to take them off and put them back on. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to jump right in to the airbox. Okay, so with the fuel tanks removed, the first thing I want to do is grab this breather hose here that's got a clamp on it. Might need some water pliers. And we're going to remove this. Pull that up out of the way. That should pull off. This is our air temperature sensor. We're going to disconnect it and just put that plug out of the way for right now. And then we'll move on. All right, so if we take a look around the top of the air box, we have a bunch of six millimeter screws we need to remove. Obviously, you could use a flat blade on them, but I'm going to go ahead and use a six millimeter socket, and we're going to get all these removed so we can top or uh, pop the top of this box off. Okay, so with all those loosened, we should. I got one still catching here. Should be able to pop top of this box off of here. So despite what the uh, top of that air box said, this does not have a K and N. It's just got a factory. We're going to turn these, uh, these velocity stacks here and they'll kind of lock out or unlock out of place and then just makes this a little bit easier to pull out of here. And then we can just pop these out of the bottom or the top, whichever works out. We're going to toss this to the side. Now the front of your bike might look a little different than mine because I don't have the factory snorkel on here. Instead, I have this uni filter that's just kind of popped into place there. I'll get it out in a second. If all you need to do is change your air filter, you're good. You can pop in your new air filter, uh, spin your uh, stacks back on, and you're good to go. But if you want to see how to take this thing all the way off, that's what we're going to do next. All right, so now we're going to come down here on the left-hand side of the bike, and we have some uh, six, millimeter, six millimeter bolts on this little triangle cutout. So we're gonna pull these out and then we'll get access to the side panel. It should just pop. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully we can see in here on the bottom of the throttle bodies, we have these band clamps. We don't wanna loosen the top ones. We just wanna loosen the bottom ones. So once again, six mil, and then it's a little hard to see back in here, but we got one back on this side too. We're not going to pull the bolts all the way out. We're just going to loosen them enough that we can get these things free. Okay, next up, what we want to do is unhook this fuel line clamp. Uh, there might be a little bit of pressure on it, uh, and you may have a different clamp on yours. Like I said, you know, I'm the, uh, or I said in a previous video, I'm the third owner of this bike, so God knows uh, what fasteners we have on there. And as you can see in there now, we've got the uh, fuel line disconnected. Okay, so with the fuel line removed, we can see we've got this drain hose. It's a clear one that comes down off of it. We're not going to need this when we put the new air box on. So all I'm going to do is just uh, fish this out a little bit. Pull it off. So over here on the right hand side of the bike, same thing. We need to remove this triangle cutout using a six millimeter socket. go okay so up here this is our main fuel injector plug now mine should be hung on that tong there and for whatever reason it's not so uh, all we want to do is disconnect this because we are gonna have to fish it through the box so it didn't leave me a lot of room but let's see if we can get it there we go the one thing I skipped at the beginning I want to do is up here where, I, where it should have been a snorkel and I just had that air filter I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these four bolts as well all right, so with that panel removed, you can now see we've got our throttle cables running down through there with no obstruction. So one other thing I just want to point out, there should have been a solenoid back here for the secondary air system, which it looks like one of the previous owners deleted. So if you have that, this needs to be removed as well before we can go to remove this air box. Okay, so now we're ready to remove the throttle bodies. If you get your band clamps loose enough, you should be able to rock them off of here. Finally. 
All right, so with those disconnected, I'm gonna make sure this should just pop right up the bottom of the uh, air box. I do wanna pull this clamp off for the fuel line, so that's out of the way. There's a rubber grommet down here in the bottom of the air box, so you can push the fuel line down through it, at least most of the way. Kind of pop it up, and then just feed your main plug through there and we got the air box out of place something else here um, this one pulled off but there is a rubber grommet sitting down here and we're not going to need these any longer so we're just gonna let these things sit back down in place for a moment okay so while we're working on uh doing this air box i am going to delete the secondary air system now one of the knuckleheads previous to me unhooked stuff but that was about it so they took the hose off of here but this plate's still on here so we're going to take an eight mil t-handle and spin this off we are going to reuse these screws this should just pop off the side and now we're going to replace it with one of these rottweiler block off plates that looks much nicer and doesn't leave a hole in the side of my engine. Now this plug here that was unplugged and probably why I've been getting an error code, uh, we did come with a little dongle here. I believe that fits it. We're going to plug that in and then I'm just going to find a spot to zip tie this back out of the way. It's gonna be really hard to see, but we have another one of these plates down here. I'm gonna to try to reach from the top using an eight millimeter and uh, get this plate off the side and also replace it with one of those Rottweiler block off plates. There, you can kind of see it. You can see where they unhooked the hose and just left it that way. I'm not real sure, but I somehow managed to get this stupid thing off of here. You are able to get a wrench on the top one from the top and the bottom one from the bottom and then just plan on uh, getting that screw out with your fingers. You do the same thing we did on the other side, use the little Rottweiler block off plate and get these screws tightened down. So you can probably see it back there, I got it on. It just takes a lot of patience. Now that I'm done, everything else I need to do, I'm back to uh, working on this new air box. So all you do is just press your throttle bodies back down and then tighten up your bottom hose clamps. It is going to look like they're up off there a little bit. It's not going to look perfect. That's okay. It's the way it's supposed to look. It's just the way they're machined. Uh, next thing we're going to do is grab our hose clamp and get our fuel line hooked back up right there. And there is our fuel line hooked back up. Now you probably have a spring style on yours if, if it's still factory. Like I said, mine's a third owner, so it's what I got. All right, so with the throttle bodies reattached and the fuel line on, next thing we need to do is get this check valve out of here. And, you know, I'll probably just end up taking a screwdriver. These are uh, permanent hose clamps. We're going to undo these and then pull. This is the check valve. We're going to pull it out. All right, so with this check valve removed, if you're using the Rottweiler intake, you'll take this apart. This is going to be the side that goes inside the air box. There's going to be a little ball and spring in here, and then you'll put it back together. Uh, you know, in between here. Now you can tell, you know, I'm not using the actual Rottweiler airbox. I'm using an airbox from ITG. It's pretty much the same thing, except this is not cut out. So what we are going to use instead is just a little breather filter on the crankcase. I'll show you what that looks like. We're gonna have to find a way to get that out of the way. It's gonna work the same way. Then we're gonna get our base plate on and get our airbox all set up. All right, so ensuring you don't have any, you know, kinks in the line. I just took the bottom part of the hose. We used a hose clamp there, clamp this on, and then just zip tied it to the frame. Now we're going to move back up to the base plate. All right, so the first thing we need to do before we can actually get to the base plate is we need to take these, uh, using a Torx 20 bit, these two screws out. This is our air temperature sensor that we're going to have to reuse. So we're going to get this out of our factory air box. Just be careful with it. This is just plastic. You don't want to break it. All right, you can see I got my base plate sitting here, and this is for reference purposes. This is the orientation it's going to go. What we need to do is take our air temperature sensor and feed it up so it sits like this. Uh, there is a plug on it. I'm going to leave the plug portion pointed to the front. It'll make it a little bit easier to get to. We're going to use the included hardware. Uh, this is an Allen bit. We're going to come up through the bottom, get these nuts on the back, 
Do not tighten this down too much because we don't want to break it. I'll put these sizes up on the screen here in just a moment. So using an eight millimeter socket and a four millimeter Allen, this is what it should look like. You do have uh, your air sensor plug up here. We're gonna plug it in. Uh, using a little dielectric grease is always a good idea. I'm just gonna set it over to the side for a moment while we grab the O-rings and some grease and get on with the rest of it. Okay, as you can see, we've got our O-rings set down around here. I went ahead and greased those. Uh, another thing we need to do here is we do have these clips that need to slide over the front and rear tab. Just make sure you get them lined up because in here in a few moments, we are going to have to uh, clip in our air filter. All right, so with our clips in place, we're gonna slide our base plate down. Just let it sit there. All right, then we are going to take our factory velocity stacks. We're gonna set them back down. Make sure they click into place. All right, we're all good there. All right, so before we put this on, it's very important that you oil this. Now, I'm going to use no-toil spray. You want to make sure you get this sprayed throughout, that it's uh, all the way through the foam. Once we get that done, then we can put it down on top of our base plate, but you definitely want to make sure this is completely oiled before installing it on the motorcycle. All right, so with the air filter good and oiled, we got a tab down here we need to ensure is clipped under the base plate, we want to make sure we've got our two ears lined up here. And personally, I like using a screwdriver to make sure we get these down into place. Hear that one snap into place, just flip that tab over, do the front one. Now this next part's optional, but I like to use a pre-filter on mine. This is a Rot, Rot, uh, Rottweiler pre-filter, uh, just less cleaning of the main one, a little bit added protection. Uh, this was oiled off camera. All you do is just pull this down into place. And now we've got even extra filtration. What's also nice is I've found that you know, if you keep a spare one of these, which I've got a few spares, you can pop these off when they get dirty. Lots of times you'll find the inside filter is still perfectly clean. And as long as it's still got oil on it, you could just pop one of these off and pop a fresh one on without having to take the uh, entire air box apart without having to wash the one underneath. So uh, something I like to do, but I'll leave that up to you guys if you want to put one of these pre-filters on. Okay, so with the air box reinstalled, we do need to plug in our main connector back up here so make sure you, you uh, this this big gray one plug that in on the inside of the frame there all right guys so that is how you remove your stock air box and install one of these either ITG or Rottweiler air intakes on a KTM 990 also I do the secondary air system delete part of it in this video obviously part of it already been taken off so um, I'm gonna link everything I used and also the Rottweiler equivalent of the air intake down in the description below so uh, obviously, you need to know how to put the tanks back on. I've linked that video, so check that out. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering that subscribe button, because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about anything, I went over also how I like it, because probably by the time this video posts, I've had a chance to test out the bike. Let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.